Hey guys, it's Anne over at Plant Obsessed, and today we're going to look at my vegetable garden. So, what I have here is my new raised bed that I built that was almost the death of me. Um, yeah, each one of those blocks weighs about 30 or 40 pounds, and uh, I'm apparently not 21 anymore. So, yeah. I plan to do that to all four of them. I'm just going to try and be a little smarter about it next time. Yeah, 100 different bricks there. So, although it's super cool and I love it, I need to take it slower. So, these are my Amish paste tomatoes. And all of these are jalapenos. This one is a salsarific poblano. Uh, because I try to overwinter my peppers, I keep them in pots as much as I can. This is a Anaheim pepper. This is uh, early on in its stage as this is early on in the poblano stage. The little jalapenos aren't really doing a whole bunch yet but I did start them from seed whereas I did buy those as plants. This is my first attempt at growing a fig. Uh, I don't see any figlets any place on there. I think that's what you call them, figlets. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. Uh, this is the first year. It's a Chicago fig, uh, which is supposed to be hardy in my zone with protection, I think. Um, it does get to be about 20 below Fahrenheit here with, uh, you know, sustained winds that make it 40 to 60 below f degrees Fahrenheit. So even that's why I've left this guy in a pot because there's no way I'm going to leave this out to the elements. But it should be able to survive on the porch. All right, and here is what we are now calling the grandpa pepper. So you can see this is the only one that survived the overwintering. It, they got a bad um, case of some kind of bug. I'm not really sure what. Spider mites, maybe. I don't even really know what kind of pepper it was, um, but he's what we now call Grandpa Pepper. So he is a big boy. But he's been up potted into this is about a three gallon pot, and uh, so I'm excited to see what he does in the up pot. That weighs about 20 pounds, so I'm probably going to regret that. But as big as he is, he needs the room. He was not doing good in his one gallon pot. I've also started with currants this year. Um, it's one of those things where I always liked them as a kid. Uh, my family always put them into pastries and things, and you can't really even hardly even buy them anymore. So I was excited when I found black currants on sale, or for sale. So they're also in pots because I was I've done a lot of research and. Basically, they said leave them in pots until they find an area where they like it. So, I'm not sure what like versus ouch, not liking looks like for currants because they've never grown them before. I'm not sure what that is. That's probably sunburn. It has been hot here. Hot. Like almost 100 degrees every single day. We've only had probably half an inch, three quarters of an inch of rain in the last three weeks. I've been out here watering continuously. All right, so then looks like something must have been hanging out in my onion slash garlic bed here. I don't know what that's doing. All right, I also have a couple of pepper plants in here. One of those last minute everything was on sale. You know how it is. Plain obsessed. Hello. These are some kind of yellow pepper. Not really sure what they are, but they I knew they were pepper plants. Could be a Hungarian hot wax pepper. I'm not sure. But that's what they look like to me. So the onions and garlic are still doing their thing. This is my first year trying them, so I'm really not sure what I'm doing at all. But uh, some people say when the leaves start to die on them, that's when you pull them. I don't know. I'm just going to let them go for a while. All right. My neighbor's hammering. So this is one of my attractors trying to get pollinators to come into my tomato plants. 
These are nasturtiums. They are also edible and they taste kind of peppery. Um, I do enjoy them. If you cut them up and put them in salads, they taste really good. All right, so then I did grow most of my stuff from seed, but my orange tomatoes did not make it. Uh, we had like a late frost here and they died. So I bought a tomato chef's choice orange. So we'll see how that works. I've never had that before. Then this is a uh, sriracha pepper. Love my sriracha sauce. So I'm imagining I will love the peppers. So more Amish paste tomatoes. I do a lot of canning. So really they get to be about baseball size and they're solid with very, very little seeds. So that's very good for paste making and any sort of thing you want to do with tomatoes. Don't have anything that is turning red yet, obviously. But we are seeing some really nice fruit set. Of course, most years I would already be harvesting. I usually plant some 4th of July tomatoes around here. Kind of hedge my bet, didn't do it this year. And uh, kind of regretting it. So here is the tag for the Amish paste tomato. I've been saving seeds from these for years. Uh, but just in case, I always buy one new one make sure the genetics stay good. But that's what it looks like in case anybody wants to buy it. They are a big plant. Um, let me see if I can flip it over here if you want to stop the video and read that. But they are a very, very good, my favorite. Um, if I had a choice, I probably wouldn't grow much more of anything else. I like the orange ones because they look pretty in salsa, but uh, for functionality, these are the best. All right, let's see, make one more turn. Uh, you guys have probably heard me say that I'm into bonsai. This is my pre-bonsai garden, so that it is just basically trees that are hardy in my zone, allowed to run amok. I dig them up, prune the roots, and put them back uh, until they're ready to go in a pot and be a bonsai. I also do my propagation over here. So these are grapes literally just uh, cut off some stems last winter and jammed them in the ground. Didn't do anything else, just jammed them in the ground. Uh, okay, so we're gonna take a pause here and we're gonna go look at the rest of my edible food. All right, these are the grapes. Uh, so those were the don donors for the little baby plant that you saw over there in the bonsai garden. I used to have this frame up here to get rid of the Japanese beetles because I would put landscape um, like greenhouse fabric over the top of it. But ever since I have started using Milky Spore, um, Fourth of July is usually go time for the beetles here in central Illinois. And as you can tell, I have leaves on my tree, on, on my, they're not trees, they're great plants. but when the Japanese beetles go nuts, these things were naked and they look like they had uh, lace for leaves. I cannot say enough for the milky spore powder. It uh, doesn't matter what brand you buy, it's the same sort of thing. It's a beneficial um, fungus, I believe, that eats grubs. So anything that starts out as a grub in your soil, the milky spore, I'm not sure what it does exactly, you'll have to Google it. Um, but it, it's self-preserving, so it is expensive, so it's like 50 bucks for like a 25 pound or 30 pound bag. However, it re reproduces on its own like a, like a weed, and it will spread throughout the soil in your yard, and you only have to redo it about once every 10 years. Five to 10, depending. I'm, I'm assuming not everybody's soil is the same. But in my soil, I've bought $100 of it in 20 years. I mean, I used to spend $200 a year trying to murder the Japanese beetles. And so, yes, it is very expensive, but I have a quarter acre here, and $100 worth has protected my quarter acre for two decades. So, I'm not paid by anybody, I'm just saying. It is not a 100% thing. You can see the where it turns everything into lace. There are still some of them alive. 
but um, way better. These are some propagated grapes that I did last year. They're similar to the ones that you saw in the bonsai garden. Just cut off a, a twig in the winter, stuck it in the soil, end of story. I had no expectations if they would live or die, but you know, if you don't try, you don't know. All right, on to the I next. I would be tree. remiss if I did not mention the mango tree that my worms planted for me. So far, so good. It's, it's alive. And uh, this is the first one that's made it to having actual leaves. So I am super excited about it. Um, there is somebody over in England who does this pretty successfully uh, called Mick Bonsai. Um, but, you know, England's a little bit different. I think they're warmer than us. But he did say he had problems with squirrels and stuff digging up the, the seed. So I'm going to put some rocks on top of here to keep them from picking. Also, if I keep it in the understory here, most of the larger birds don't come under here because they get stuck. All right, on to oh, the next. I, forgot. I do have my avocado trees. Yes, I know I'm not going to get an avocado out of this for like 20 years. But to a certain degree, as far as plants go, uh, I'm doing it because I can, not because I need it. I'm still obviously buying avocados like they're going out of style. But uh, I also have two or three avocado trees so far. And uh, someday, perhaps, I will actually get avocados from them. Alrighty, here is my super weedy rhubarb garden. And sort of over here is also my asparagus, which I just, I think I just suck at asparagus. I just don't know. It seems like some years, all of a sudden I have a three foot tall asparagus spear and I don't even know, it like came overnight. And some ni sometimes I don't get anything at all. But I'm gonna keep trying and someday I'll figure it out. Uh, this is my lemon mint. Uh, I've let it go flower a little bit, which is dumb because this stuff spreads like nobody's business. But I love it. Make teas out of it. Uh, make wine out of it. Lemon mint. It is awesome. Kind of creeping around here. Um, here's one of the Transcendacea flowers I couldn't get in my other, other video. They're usually bigger. I don't know. I think there's been a cat or something tromping through here. I don't know why everything's laying down. This is chocolate mint. This makes some awesome mojitos. Also, it grows into the grass and makes uh, mowing the grass super pleasant. Really smells awesome. Also, made wine out of this. Okay, on to the next food plot. Here is my big old apple tree. I am a little concerned. I don't know what is getting on this tree. I've got a branch here that's dying off that looks like many things that I'm familiar with, but it, it doesn't 100% fit. It, whatever it is, I think it's fungus or something, but there's no caterpillars, there's no bugs on this, and it's even causing the bark to fall off. I don't know what it is. Anybody that's super good, you know, with trees or is an arborist who can tell me what's doing this, Am I going to lose the tree? I mean, the tree's 20-some years old. I bought it and planted it 20 years ago. So, yeah, the trumpet vine does what it wants. There's, you can join it or fight it. Um, with my level of commitment, it's a little bit of both. So you can see, this is a 20-year-old uh, delicious apple tree. This thing's been hit by lightning. It's been split by storms but it gets me a lot of food. A lot of wine, a lot of apple sauce, sliced apples, you name it. But I'm a little concerned that pieces of it are dying. It might be the end. Leave me comments below if you, you know anything about these apple diseases. All right, and then I'll take you to the next food. Bane of my existence. This is my pollinator apple tree. Never does get very many apples. I wonder why it doesn't get very many apples. Dick? Yeah, keep nibbling. Lucky I live in this city. 
I digress. Okay, so here we are back at the herb garden that has my daylilies. And in case anybody wonders, what is the difference between a tiger lily and a daylily? This is a daylily. Its foliage looks exactly like really wide grass. This isn't your, you know, just regular wild kind. This is a cultivar, so it is a different color. But this is a daylily. This is a tiger lily. See its spots? Like a tiger. I know some people call these daylilies, and some people call these tiger lilies. But if we're being real, the people who do that are wrong. This is a daylily. This is a tiger lily. And that is a bunch of weeds. Again, I digress. And if you see these little things in here, these are bulbules. You can pull these off and these will each one grow you a new tiger lily where you want it. If you let them fl just drop to the ground, Mother Nature decides where your tiger lilies are going to go. As far as I know, nothing eats them. Moving on. More. More. This is a stargazer lily. Isn't she pretty? Again, more tiger lilies. All right, moving over. Some rock rose here. Some sedum. Some weeds. Uh, that would be thistle. To everybody who walks in my yard, don't go barefoot. Apple mint, doing super, super good. Love the smell of this stuff. Such a happy smell. I do let some of it flower. Try and keep the pollinators happy around here so that they can keep doing me favors and pollinating my edibles. Not that that's not edible, but certainly have enough to let some of it go and uh, flower. So then here, pineapple mint. It's a variegated pineapple mint. It thrives better when I don't have it planted with other things that are stronger than it. It's Of all the mints that I have, it is probably the least strong. But there is more of the pineapple mint here. And we have a hide coat lavender. I suck at lavender. I try and grow it and keep it over winter every year and it doesn't and I buy a new one every year. Rosemary I manage to keep sometimes for two years but not always. More rock rose. This is tricolor sage. You can see where at the beginning of the season it's hard to tell the difference between the tricolor sage and the pineapple mint. They're super similar. Under here is my curry plant. I do try and keep that over winter, uh, but that doesn't really work very good either. But I keep trying. I'll figure it out sooner, sooner or later. Okay, looks like this is going to be my first harvest for tomatoes for the year. This is called Sweet 100. Gets really, really good reviews. But uh, there's the scale of it. They're tiny and they're probably any sort of redeeming quality that tomatoes have have been bred out because it is pure sugar. Mexican tarragon. This is my first year growing this but I love all things Mexican food, so quite honestly, this is a win. So Mexican tarragon, smell of vision here. To me, this has more of an anise flavor than regular tarragon does. I actually bought it this year because there wasn't any regular at all, or I would have bought both. 
but uh, you can see the flowers are very pretty as well. Going back here, we have Thai basil. I should probably, if it wasn't the middle of July, I'd pick that up and move it into the sun. The tomatoes taking over. Then, what do I have here? This might be another tarragon. Squirrels may have ran off with the uh, tag. They're just little shits. I really don't like squirrels. Yeah, that's another tarragon. So this might be, wait, we use a lot of mulch. Maybe it's under the mulch. Let me see. Nope. Pretty sure that's a tarragon. More rock rows to help with the pollinators. Get them, keep them moving through my garden so that uh, bees and whatnot make sure to get me lots of things to eat. Alrighty, I think, I think that's it for the, the edible garden. I will leave you with a picture of my pollination, one of my pollination plants, 25 cents, and they're gorgeous. They are gorgeous, and you can save the seeds. This little thing here will dry out, and you can keep it and plant it again next year. All right, guys, if you like the video, give me a muddy thumbs up. If you're not already a member of my family, click that subscribe button. And if you want to know what I'm doing, when I'm doing it, ring that little bell icon. All right, guys, thanks for hanging out with me and my flowers. Everybody, have a good day.